of this. India is facing significant environmental challenges associated with mining projects. As we know, the widening of the mining industry is crucial for developing industries and nations. As the rise in infrastructure development is growing, so the demand for iron, steel and coal is set to continue the growth expectations for residential and commercial buildings and coal for energy generation. But as the projects are causing environmental impacts, we need to take mitigative steps to reduce the risk associated with it. Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel Corbiz. My name is Nupur Raj and today we will be giving you an overview on how to obtain environmental clearance for mining projects. So first, let me introduce you to the concept of EIA for AC. EIA for mining project is a process of identifying, predicting, evaluating and mitigating the social, biological and other relevant impacts of the developmental proposal prior to a major decision being taken for the execution of the project. As per the EIA notification 2006, these industries require prior environmental clearance to decrease the load on the environment. Now let's have a look on the classification of mining methods. First is surface mining. In surface mining, we have quarrying, open cast mining, placer mining, hydrolicking, dredging, solution mining, borehole mining, in-site mining, and second one is underground mining. Now have a look on underground mining. Room and pillar mining, shrinkage stopping, sub-level stopping, hydraulic mining, long wall mining, room and pillar mining, sub-level mining, caving, long wall mining, block caving. Let's see how mining projects have been categorized for environmental clearance. The requirement of prior environmental clearance for mining projects listed in item number 1A of the Schedule 1 as per the EIA notification 2006 defines the categorization based on the area. Category A includes those projects which is having mine lease area greater than 100 hectare for non-coal mines and having mine lease area greater than 150 hectare for coal mine and asbestos mining irrespective of the mining area. Also the projects handled by MOEF and CC and EAC. Now category B projects includes those projects which is having mine lease area less than 100 hectare for non-coal mines and less than 150 hectare for coal mines and the projects are handled by SIA and SEAC. It must be noted general conditions shall apply. We will have a quick look on the process of obtaining environmental clearance for mining projects are screening, scoping, public consultation and appraisal. Now you must be thinking what steps involved in EIA process for mining projects. So let's see the process. Identification of site, preparation of the pre-feasibility report for the prior environmental clearance, submission of filled in form 1 along with the pre-feasibility report and draft TOR for EIA studies to the concerned authority that is MOEFCC category A projects and CIA for category B projects. After inspecting the documents, the concerned authority declares the results on the portal whether the project is approved or not, if the projects require an EIA study or not. The committee releases a TOR letter to the proponent. Draft EIA will be submitted in hard copy to SPCB, Jila Parishad, Collector, etc. Incorporating terms of reference pointers required for public hearing. After incorporating the public hearing minutes in the final EIA report, the project proponent must submit the required documents, that is TOR letter, final EIA report, form 2, etc. Clearance by the concerned authority and grant of EC. Let's check what legislations are applicable to mining of mineral sectors. The first one is Mines Act 1952. Second is the Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act 1957. Third is Mines Rules 1955. Fourth is Mineral Concession Rules 1960. Fifth is Mineral Conservation and Development Rules 1988. Sixth is State Minor Mineral Concession Rule 1960. Seventh is Granite Conservation and Development Rule 1999. Eighth is the Water Prevention and Control Pollution Act 1974. Ninth is the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981. Tenth is the Environmental Protection Act 1986. Eleventh is the Forest Conservation Act 1988. 
and 12th is the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. To better understand drafting an EIA report, we should know the generic structure of EIA as per the notification. First is the introduction part, second is the project description, third is the analysis of alternatives that is technology and the site, fourth is description of the environment, Fifth is the anticipated environmental impacts and mitigation measures. Environmental monitoring program. Sixth is additional studies. Seventh is project benefits. Eighth is environmental cost benefit analysis, environmental management plan. Ninth is summary and conclusion. And tenth is disclosure of consultant engaged. But how many associate teams of experts are involved in the completion of an EIA report for mining projects? Let's have a look. NABIT consultant, NABL approved lab, civil engineers, air and noise quality specialist, OSH officer, geologist, geohydrologist, ecologist, transportation specialist, sociologists, etc. The summary should clearly present the finding of critical environmental issues and their resolutions. Whenever possible, the summary should use base maps, tables and figures. Information should be concise with meaningful presentations. It must be able to stand alone as a document. It should necessarily cover all the details about the project. Environmental impacts and mitigation measures, risk assessments, DMP and EMP. These all are the major requirements for the clearance of mining projects. So if you are looking for the assistance of certified consultants that can help you with the report or certificate, you can connect with our expert at Corbis with the details below. We help our clients with all environmental compliances related to their projects. Please like and share if you found this information helpful. You can also subscribe to our channel and visit our website. Thank you for watching.